In this update, we're going to be diving deep as we come out of a three-year La Nina heading into an Enzo neutral, going into an El Nino, and what that means for your upcoming summer hurricane season into the fall months. So let's start off with the overall Climate Prediction Center's latest update, and they just updated this as of last week, and we've been predominantly been in this La Nina really for the last three years, but you can see in the month of March, we definitely made that transition to what what's referred to as Enzo neutral and as we're going into April time frame now going into May we're starting to see that transition coming out of Enzo neutral going into your El Nino and that just continues to get stronger as we get towards summer going into the heart of hurricane season heading into your fall months so what does that look like currently as far as the Enzo look? We've been in this La Nina, predominantly minus one down here in the, as your sea surface temperature anomalies, but you can see the trend. It's been trending coming out of that La Nina, and right now we're more or less predominantly around zero, which is the a neutral phase is where we are now currently. So what that typically looks like as we're transitioning into that Enzo neutral type setup as we have much warmer conditions draped across much much of the south as we start to see the transition of a little bit more active subtropical jet as the polar jet starts to retreat further north but it's also going to have a little bit of a buckle and we're starting to see that reflection of some cooler temperatures especially up and along the great lakes and predominantly that's what we'll see over the next week or two as we transition and get stronger into that neutral setup. And that's reflected on the teleconnections as well. If we take a look at the Arctic Oscillation as well as the, the North American Oscillation, they're actually both trending negative. What that will do is that will pull down some of that colder air from the north and transition it into more of our northern states along the upper Great Lakes, through the Ohio Valley, and into the northeast as we transition into those more of an Enzo neutral type setup. And here's the latest temperature anomalies reflecting that for the next week. So we've had some record high temperatures across this region, but now we're starting to see more effects of that Enzo neutral that lowers the AO and the NAO and predominantly puts the much cooler conditions up here across the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley as well as into the northeast into the mid-atlantic states and of course it'll modify as it drifts a little bit further south heading towards into your southeastern parts of the country while much of the desert southwest and much of the areas that are under that drought stricken areas continue to remain above average while much of the pacific northwest continues to remain below average so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and you get you're in you get all my daily content on this channel it's also important to hit the like button as well it definitely helps out more than you know and if you're in the market for a weather station i definitely highly recommend the Tempest Weather Flow Weather Station. It's one I've personally had for about three years now. The cool thing about it is it's all solar. It literally takes like 10 minutes to install. You get this convenient app on your phone. Plus you have the desktop where you can view all 45,000 across the country that have the Tempest. It's a cool little gadget. And I also have a 10% discount code and free shipping in the description below if you'd like to actually order one uh, for yourself. But Going into May, we're going to start to see subtle changes and a much more active subtropical jet. And I stopped it here on the 500 millibar going into the, the first couple of days of May. We start to see these little pulses of energy dropping much further south out here in the Pacific, and that will stream across. So what that does is that allows the Gulf of Mexico to open up a lot sooner than what we have seen as of late increasing a lot of these dew points across the southern plains but also increase the probabilities of rain prospects much further west than what you've seen into these kind of the, these drought uh stricken areas and if we take a look at the latest uh seven day sea surface temperature anomalies we start to see the trend right we're starting to see the eating away of these cooler anomalies out, out here in the equatorial pacific and replaced with much more 
uh, above average uh, sea surface temperature anomalies then as these little vorticities drop down it's able to take advantage of some of those well some of those above average sea surface temperatures out here in the pacific off the baja not just into the gulf of mexico again if you got a little bit more pacific influence with more above average precipitation and have a little bit more lifting the lifting further back then that opens the door for increased rain prospects as well as the severe threat as we transition into your into your may time frame and if we extend it into the first week of may we can ar already see on the latest uh, cfs updates on some of these dew points kind of reflecting that allowing those dew points to start start a little bit sooner going into your you know you know as we get uh, coming out of the pacific it's able to tap into the gulf moisture but also a lot of this pacific moisture as well and we start to see that that dry line set up much further west than what we've seen as of late and then the dew points will allow to surge much further north as well actually heading up all the way into canada so that what that's going to do is that's going to increase the severe weather probabilities especially of course into the southern plains into the central u.s but also increase the probabilities of rain prospects and we're probably going to be seeing the above average rains as we head into the may time frame and that's the latest update from the european week well, weeklies reflecting that as well so may is already your wettest month of the year predominantly for a good part of the southern plains here and we're seeing above average precipitation so that's complements of a much more active subtropical pacific jet that we're going to be influenced by and with these vorticities that you know come in much further south and have a lot more time frame to increase these dew points we're going to find ourselves in areas that have seen the drought as of late start eating away at some of those drought stricken areas into west texas western oklahoma western portions of kansas as well but also increases the rain prospects along the good chunk of the southern plains as well as into the southeast while much of the ohio valley will start to see some a little bit more of a drier out type setup so but it's still influenced as far as the temperature goes with that more active polar flow and that enzo neutral type setup so we're starting to see that transition now and i think that will continue going into the month of may so we'll have that polar jet dip and we should be average to slightly below average for a good part of the great lakes the ohio valley to the northeast and that transition possibly as far south into maybe kentucky maybe even of course into tennessee while much of the central u.s is going to be above average with that increased opportunities for more of a south wind and higher dew points it's going to be a lot more muggy and the pacific northwest will continue to remain below average and it's it's the same reflection on the GFS extended, even a little bit more bullish on the temperature anomalies across the central US, but more or less, they were both on board with both global guidance as the longer range Euro weeklies and the GFS extended are on board with that setup as we get deeper into that May timeframe. And I think that continues to strengthen as we go into June. June is also a wetter you know typically a wetter month for a good part of the central and U central and eastern two-thirds of the u.s and i think that's what we're going to be finding is as we get a little bit stronger coming out of that neutral heading into more of that el nino type setup more predominantly el nino it's supposed to be around 62 percent el nino as we go into june so and that gets deeper 82 percent as we get into the heart of hurricane season so we should start to see a, a much wetter type setup across the southern plains and eating away a lot of these drought prone stricken areas slowly but surely but we are going into we will be going into summer and typically around the deep south it's hot it's july this will be july time frame by then and much of the south and southeast is likely going to be above above average precipitation while we have a little bit more active polar jet continuing with that neutral setup and underneath that we could be looking at some average to above average rains up here into portions of the missouri valley heading into the ohio valley and parts of the mid-atlantic as well as of the northeast 
while more on the drier side as we trend towards July into your into your western region so and as we go into August I mean August is already a hot month <laughs> so not that unusual to see above average precipitation or you know below average precipitation in much of the south but we are going to be getting into the heart of hurricane season and so we'll start to have to look for probably what what will be a, you know kind of an in, in close development type stuff season but also a little bit more active on hurricanes but i'm not expecting a you know a, a above average season so we're gonna we'll go over the hurricane setup as we get deeper into this uh, update but yes predominantly for july august and september the heart of your more or less summer months you're going to be above average for a good part of much of the carolinas much of the southeast much of the southern plains into the desert southwest while much of the northern states will be slightly or just at average for your, those regions. And if we take a look at the overall Climate Prediction Center, it's kind of reflecting that as much of the country will be above average. Uh, for a good part of the country, I think the only areas that might be below average is complements of the little bit more active polar jet is further north where they have seen that those late season snows uh, you're going to be seeing those below average temperatures kind of hang on and you're favoring, you know, below average to more neutral uh, average conditions as you go into the heart of summer further, further north. So, but yes, as we go into deeper into the summer months, we transition into the El Nino. So what that particularly means is, is we start to have more warmer waters across the Pacific and we start to see this polar jet, this sub, sub, subtropical jet, have more of a, a neutral type setup, and these will stream across. So we should start to see even more influence, especially as we head into your fall months, as a lot wetter type setup. And I think a lot of these areas that are under the drought now will slowly start to be eating away at that drought. And areas that have been, that are going to be predominantly on the wetter side will transition into a drier type setup as we go into the fall heading in towards the winter coming up on this upcoming winter while much of the northern states you transition out of those cooler anomalies and transition more into those warmer anomalies as we get more into that october november and especially deeper into that december time frame heading in towards the end of the year. So now let's talk about the hurricane season. So if we take a look at coming out of a three-year La Nina, heading into neutral, going into El Nino, which would what we have, we come up with several uh, 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 analogs into your heat, the peak of hurricane season, which is typically between August and October. And that's where it's gonna be predominantly 82% El Nino influenced during the peak of hurricane season, we find ourselves with these analogs, 1969, 2002, 2004, 2006, 2009, 2012, 2014, and 2015. So if you put all that together, this is the reason why the Colorado State University came out with this outlook, which is the first outlook in a long time that we've seen a below average forecasted up front from from the from the national weather service and the colorado state university we typically average about 14 and a half storms they're projecting about 13 so typically about 55 uh, six over about 70 named storm days where they're forecasting around 55 predominantly maybe six hurricanes just so you can see every trend line is predominantly a little bit below average so overall 13 named storms uh six of those could be hurricanes and two of those could be major hurricanes so even though this year may be on the the the, the lesser side as far as the named storms it typically only takes one storm there's been plenty of el nino years out there that have had some big hurricanes to it it doesn't imply that the United States is safe from a major landfall. It doesn't imply that at all. It just implies that overall we'll have a lot of shear in the Atlantic and that typically reduces as far as the amount 
of storms. It has nothing to do with the intensity of storms. So it only takes one, as we saw last year with Ian and Fiona, with two storms, with 14 named storms, and two of those actually were strong enough to be deemed retirement. And those did a lot of damage uh, with those per two, two particular systems. But let's take a look at the drought currently right now right so obviously the west coast was pretty wet for your for your your winter months we saw a major dent with these series of atmospheric rivers coming in from california so that was a great thing to see but what we're seeing is is this dry line <laughs> and the drought stricken areas across west texas western oklahoma western kansas nebraska has been evident and actually getting stronger uh, with this drought because it's been so dry more of the setups have been basically east of the i-35 corridor and actually we're starting to see florida uh drying out on on that side as well i think both of those are going to be slowly eaten away over time and by the time we get to the end of the year i think a lot of these areas will have a major dent and a lot of these drought stricken areas of what they've seen so far because the el nino is supposed to be uh, you know, if moderate, if not strong. So we're coming out of that La Nina, going into a neutral, and predominantly we're going to be pretty bullish and heading into a more of a moderate type, uh, moderate type El Nino uh, going into your fall, heading into your winter months. So as we go into your fall months, we're definitely starting to see the reflection of that and a lot of the longer range guidance hinting at October again is already above average precipitation for a lot of these areas or fairly wet on the wetter side for the Southern Plains. But look, look at the setup, right? It goes much further west, right? So now it starts more of it in New Mexico, into Colorado, all of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, into Missouri, into Arkansas, into Louisiana. So all these areas should be seeing above average precipitation as we head into the you know October and as we go into November look at that guys I mean that's full-blown moderate if not almost strong El Nino really start to take shape by then and above average precipitation really pulls in for a good part of the country and um and I think as we transition in December as we have more of a foothold on that El Nino then we'll start to see a more active subtropical jet further south and take in more of that El Nino type look where we have that subtropical jet draped across the south. We've got the polar jet retreating, warmer flow, cross -polar, warmer cross polar flow, hence at above, above normal temperatures and below average precipitation by then so i appreciate you guys uh watching uh do like your do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update why i protect you before and after the storm